right, thanks, Bob. I practiced with a soda can, so I'm going to use a microphone here. <laughs> but, um, well, thank you all tonight. And I want to start because this is an evening that's about inspiration, it's about dreams, it's about wishes. So I'm going to start tonight with a wish for all of you, that, that I have for all of you. And that is that sometime throughout the course of this evening, whatever you planned to come here and experience, you're going to have a different experience than that. And in fact, you're going to go home tonight and you're trying to get off to sleep. You're trying to have those dreams. <coughs> Something's going to be nagging at you. Something's going to take hold tonight of you. Some idea, some concept, something you see, something you hear. And it's going to hold on. And tomorrow morning, when you're having your cup of coffee, you're still going to be thinking about it. And a week from now and a month from now, at some point, you're going to realize <coughs> that although you came here maybe expecting something different, what you needed, what life equipped you with, was what you actually took away and you find yourself applying it in your own life in your own way in some meaningful way. That is what I wish all of you experienced this evening. And it's what I experienced on a work trip to Charlotte, North Carolina uh, last year in June. I was there to support a big volunteer initiative that we were doing on a Saturday morning, 1,200 something different volunteers for a lot of different companies and 50 something different service projects of all sorts of, uh, of kinds and shapes and sizes. And uh, we were out, I was out there to do that and I did that, but I had something totally different happen to me while I was there than I was expecting. It wasn't on my Outlook calendar, it wasn't on my to-do list, but it ended up happening to me. The Friday afternoon before this big project, I went out to this place with my colleagues and we had to take care of some last minute logistics for some of the projects that were going on in the next morning. So they drove me out to this place called the Charlotte Community Tool Bank. I had no idea what to expect. We showed up, walked in the doors, and there's this loading dock over here. And I'm looking around and there's water and snacks and plants and mulch and kind of everything that the volunteers are going to need for whatever project they're going to do the next day. And in front of me, as far as I can see, thousands of square feet of these bright blue, brighter than my shirt, bright blue sh tools, saws, rakes, ladders, tables, uh, generators, you name it, gloves, uh, chair, anything that they would need for any of these service projects was there and could be loaned to any charitable organization in that community. And in fact, that's exactly how they made this whole day that I was there to support happen. Nonprofits would come in with their trucks or their cars and I was there to help load, up, load them up with all the equipment that the volunteers would need for the next day. The volunteers just needed to show up and do their thing and go home at the end of the day and feel like they did a good thing and the community's transformed a little bit better. <laughs> And then the nonprofits come back, you know, the next week and they drop off the tools that they borrowed. And now they're available for another charitable organization to use the next weekend. And that was really cool and really simple. And it just was, okay, that, I, I enjoyed that. And as I stepped back from that experience and I thought about it, I started thinking about how would I do something like this in Phoenix? I don't have a tool bank in Phoenix. I, I don't know how I would go about this. And I flew home and tried to get to sleep that night. And what I was thinking about was, I, I don't know how I would get this going in Phoenix. I would love to do this in Phoenix. And the next morning I'm having my cup of coffee and this is the, this is the problem is pers persisting. And eventually I'm putting a call in to Mark Broadbeck, who's the CEO of Tool Bank USA, and I'm saying, I, I, I gotta have you in Phoenix. How, how do we make this happen? And he said, we need to do three things. First, Tool Bank doesn't go where it's not invited. I said, Mark, you're invited. Please come on down. <laughs> you consider this my invitation to you, come. And okay, that's great, thank you. Love the enthusiasm, but we gotta do a couple more things first before we can open our doors. The second thing is, we got to make sure it's the right thing for Phoenix. We got to make sure that Phoenix, as a community, would want and use this resource, short term and long term, that it's going to be successful and it's going to be sustainable. 
and we got to go about that a certain way. So what we did together was we reached out to our friends and my friends in the community to, and then their friends and, and so on. We cast the net as widely as we could and we, we got 387 different agencies, for-profits, non-profits, churches, schools, municipalities, neighborhood associations to respond. And what they said was that 97% of them would start, I'm sorry, 97% of them would do more service projects in our community if they had a tool bank. 95% of them would do bigger projects if they had a tool bank. And this was the really exciting one. It's kind of the one that keeps me motivated. Two thirds of them said they'd start doing projects if they had something like this in their community to reach out to, to be equipped with the tools that's standing in their way of doing these service projects. Literally, just from that sample, hundreds of agencies across our community that just don't have the tools to do what they want to do to help. It's such a simple idea, and it seems like such an easy barrier to knock down. So Mark and I got back together and we looked at the survey and, okay, you know, we, we got the survey, the community wants this, they would use this, I think we're in good shape, let's do this, and, okay, hold on, hold on. We got one more thing that we need to do, one more thing we need to talk about. See, Mark and everybody at Toolbank USA, they know Toolbank, but we know Phoenix. The people outside these doors here know Phoenix. And it takes both in order to really make this a successful, sustainable project long term. I'm going to go back to Charlotte in June of 2012, and we're going to do a project that is 2,000 volunteers, 100 different uh, agencies that, that they're going to work with, who knows how many projects across that community. That's the goal. And the only reason that we can do that is because there's an organization like this that has in its client stable, the only, the only people that are allowed to be clients of Toolbank are other charitable organizations. So when we say, whoever it is, whoever in this community, a neighborhood organization, you know, Roosevelt Row just had this 800 volunteer project that they did, and, and I don't know all the logistics that went into making that happen, but uh, I would love to, for Toolbank to have been here to help them. And, and that just happened yesterday. And, uh, and you know, if we, if we have these, uh, available, uh, then if we have something like Toolbank available, then Toolbank can just reach out to all of its hundreds of clients, hopefully at some point we're at that in Phoenix, and, and we can say, hey, these companies, these organizations here in this community, these people want to come together and do this for this community. They're bringing the volunteers, they're bringing the resources, they're bringing everything you need. All you've got to do is tell us where the need is and we will come. And you better believe those agencies will come. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to create a Phoenix Community Tool Bank. You're looking at board member number one. <laughs> uh, we have board member number two. I think we've got board member number three. We're building out a board of 20 people. We're going to charter with Tool Bank USA and create a Phoenix Community Tool Bank. We're going to find an executive director from this community. We are going to find a facility in this community. We are going to work with this facility, with this community to understand what the needs are. We're going to work with all the different charitable organizations. We're going to create community gardens. We're going to help build chicken coops. We're going to help paint houses. We're going to help with art projects. We're going to set up tables and chairs so that you can sort clothes for the homeless or, or, or help food that, you know, collect food that's been donated. Uh, I mean, you name it and we can equip it and we can do it and we can make it happen. And I don't know who in this room is going to help with that. And I don't know who else out in this community is going to help with that. But what I can tell you with absolute personal certainty is that this is going to happen. We are going to open our doors. And when we do, we are going to transform volunteerism in this community. Thank you. <laughs>